Now, what Jesus does in this moment is four things. And I think these four things illustrate and highlight why Jesus is trustworthy. This is what we read. This is the first thing Jesus does in verse 49. It says, Jesus stopped. Walking down the road, stops. Dead in his tracks, indicating that Jesus hears. Now, at the very least, he hears the commotion, right? Between the crowd telling this man to be quiet and this man yelling all the more louder. But he's probably, what he's really responding to is the cries of this man, son of David, have mercy on me. And by stopping in this moment, it shows that he's aware. It shows that he's aware that he knows and he sees people. One of the things we say regularly is that we want to be a church that sees people. Like, I see you right now, right? But that's not what we mean. We don't mean that we just visually see you. We want to see people, meaning we want to know you. We want to know what's going on. We want to know your fears, your concerns, your anxieties, your joys, your highlights, your big victories, your wins, your sorrows, your concerns. Like, we want to know those things about you. We want to see you where you're at in life. And Jesus sees this man. He hears him indicating, I know who you are. I know your situation. And I know your story. And then the second thing Jesus does is he calls to this man. Continue on in verse 49. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Bring him to me. And notice how the crowd responds at this moment. So they called, they being the crowd, called to the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Like how quickly, right, their attitude has changed towards this guy. Just moments ago, they were telling him to shut up, sit down, and be quiet. And now they're saying, hey, it's your turn. Today's your day, buddy. Go for it. Jesus is calling you. And instantly throwing his cloak aside, he, cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Again, by calling this man, it shows that Jesus engages. He sees, he engages. He could have just shrugged his shoulders and like, I'm going to keep going. My ultimate destination is Jerusalem, not Jericho. And I do have more important things to do, like sacrificing my life for the sins of the entire world, right? But he doesn't say that. He stops, he calls, and then he asks. He asks. If you were here with us last week, we saw... This is, again, the question that Jesus regularly asks to take the inroads to somebody's heart. And he says, what do you want? Now, in this moment, he adds a little bit to it. He says, what do you want me to do for you? How would you answer that question? If Jesus came to you and said, hey, what do you want me to do for you? One thing, what do you want? But what do you want me to do for you? And I think what this demonstrates, and this is why Jesus is trustworthy, it demonstrates that Jesus honors people's agency. Jesus empowers people to take responsibility. See, one of the critiques and accusations towards religion and spiritual work is that it's all about manipulation and coercion. That people who are in charge just want to manipulate people, pull on their heartstrings, use fear to get them to do what they want. But Jesus never manipulates people. Jesus never forces people. He never coerces them. He never uses fear, guilt, and shame to get people to do something. He honors our agency and empowers us to take responsibility. What is it that you want? You know, it's interesting. Earlier in this chapter, in Mark 10, you you back up. A guy comes to Jesus. He's a rich man, a young man. He's in charge of, of something significant. He's known as the rich young ruler. He comes to Jesus asking the question, how do I get eternal life? And Jesus says, go sell everything you have and follow me. And the guy can't do it. He's overcome with sorrow and he walks away. And Jesus doesn't try and change his mind. Jesus allows him to make his decision, allows him to walk away, and allows him to leave. Jesus honors our agency and asks, what do you want? And here, this guy names what he wants. Verse 51, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. 
And then the last thing Jesus does is he heals. Verse 52, go, he said, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So in this moment, Jesus hears, right, indicating he's aware of this guy's circumstances. He calls and asks, indicating that he engages with this individual. He heals this guy and transforms his life. And notice what he attributes the healing to. It isn't his religious performance or his spiritual prowess. He says, your faith has healed you. Essentially, you could say it this way, simply that in this moment, Jesus responds to faith. 